lives the longest? The man or woman at the top, the middle manager, or the bottom chap and chapess who just does the ordinary day's work? Who do you think? Well, I'll put you out of your misery on that one. <laughs> Sir Michael so-and-so always lives into his 90s. The man or woman with the highest status virtually always outlives everybody else. The person that dies the quickest is the middle manager because they have constant status threats from the top and from the bottom. So if you're a middle manager, get out of it. And you know what? You can go to the Serengeti and look at baboons, and you can mirror exactly the same study. Alpha males live the longest. Those males that never quite make it die the first. And those ones which things never quite develop, they live quite a long time as well, but not as long as the top males. You can go to any graveyard in the world, and you can correlate removing things like epidemics, genetics, and other things, the longevity with the status of an individual. Now, that's an interesting message, isn't it? Status counts. There are five social qualities, triggers, status, certainty, autonomy, relatedness, and fairness. be interesting to see if leaders take this into consideration. We know about status. We know about certainty. You don't want to be ostracized from a group. Autonomy. Everybody hates being micromanaged because you are controlling their autonomy. Everybody likes to be related. But in management and in leadership, we keep a social distance. We don't form strong bonds. We put teams together who've never met each other, and we say, get on with it. But human beings cannot do anything unless they form a social bond with each other first, because that social bond then reduces the anxiety between them, and they no longer have status threats. And by the way, that means if you reduce the status threats, people are more productive. And by the way, they're also more creative. And of course, fairness is one of the universal traits that people look for in a leader, because you must be able to redistribute the booty when you've raided, when you've taken over. And of course, we know that modern leaders don't do that. They're greedy buggers. And don't forget, leaders can also look at people and not speak, and they can stare at you, but you can't stare back. They're the predator, you're the prey. Leaders are taught in the United Kingdom to stay silent and be tough and not show their emotions. We're tough guys. Don't argue with me. But you know what? That's stupid. Because as soon as you can't read the emotions in the other person, it sets off a threat response. Because you don't know what they're thinking, and you don't know what's happening. It's a huge mistake that leaders get themselves involved in. Threats to autonomy, control of their future. We don't want to be enslaved. Thousands of years ago, people would drive in, take people out, women especially, and men, and take them into their own tribe. They'd lose control. That fear is still within us. In the workplace, it manifests. We hate being micromanaged. We want fairness. And we're always looking through thin slicing of what people are thinking about us. So, we need to focus more on biology. Coming to an end now. We need to look at behavioral economics, nudge theory, neuroscience. We need to look at evolutionary psychology. We need to put a consilience of these things together and put it back into leadership and management, and not just look at theory X and theory Y and Maslow's hierarchy. What a load of nonsense. Let's get to the basics. Leaders need to be more self-aware of our social brain and how our brain has been shaped by evolution. And by the way, don't get me wrong, there are excellent examples of leadership out there. I'm not saying there are not. 
Of course there are. But what I am saying is that the facts speak for themselves. What is being taught in universities and read in magazines and books is scientific management, reward, transaction, people are economic tools, KPIs. <laughs> KPIs, wonderful. What a load of nonsense. What's the point of having great KPIs if you destroy the productivity which could create them? Power, of course, is changing in our own society. And what we need to do is assimilate a more biological theory into how we behave so there is less of a mismatch between what goes on in management and leadership in our society. And I will end with what dear old Peter Drucker, the great management guru, said. And he was right. As you know, he's passed away now, but that man left a lot of interesting ideas. He said, the leader of the past knew how to tell. The leader of the future knows how to ask. And I would say, ladies and gentlemen, we need to ask ourselves how we can put biology back into leadership. Thank you.